Good afternoon everybody, this is Andrew Driscoll and I'm doing public key cryptography which is my second video. So first off we're going to describe what a key is, why is it useful, uh, what's the public and private key when we talk about asymmetric, and why do you need two keys. So first off a key is a mathematically generated block of data. Uh, a key is a way to authenticate and encrypt data without having to use another method such as a password. If I was to log in with a website with the username user and the password of password, I would enter user and password. If I was to log into a website using a key, I would send my key which essentially says this is user, this is password, and they match up. There are two types of keys, symmetric which are single keys and asymmetric which are two keys. Symmetric is much more efficient and much faster than asymmetric just because of not having to calculate two mathematical formulas and public and private keys are used for asymmetric key use they're much longer much harder to compute and they require a lot more bits for example a general symmetric key used now is 512 bits and a very good asymmetric uh, keys use 2048 as of current as the name says for the public and private keys one can be made public the other can be made private. So we're going to have to start off with a mandatory math slide. Symmetric keys, the key chooses the algorithm, it encrypts the plain text, the same key is used for decryption by reversing the process to produce plain text again. Asymmetric keys, one key only encrypts, the other key is the only way to decrypt it. The encryption key will not decode the message. So if I have a public key and a private key and I encrypt a message with a public key I cannot decrypt that message again with the public key I can only decrypt it with the private key and the same could be said in reverse if I encrypt something with a private key I cannot decrypt it with the private key only the public key can decrypt it so the benefit of key use the key is outstanding security the message is still completely safe as long as the encryption algorithm is not flawed and does not fall into the hands of the intruders. There are two types of encryption, public key encryptions. There's the Diffie-Hellman key exchange and the RSA. Now the Diffie-Hellman is almost like a pseudo public key. It variates to one key at the end but that key is derived by two computers doing two different math processes. So, the Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange was developed in 1976 by Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman using the original concept developed by Ralph Merkel. It uses two simple mathematical processes, exponents and modulus. Exponents are commutative, meaning if you have 2 to the 3 to the 2, it is the same thing as saying 2 to the 5. Uh, trying to use logarithms to calculate the modulus of using exponents is extremely difficult and takes a lot of computing power and given any set of time it'll not be determined. So it requires two prime numbers one of which is the base and an integer. One prime number is used for the modulus and must be shared. The base, a prime number, has to be shared. The other secret integer remains a secret with the computer that is doing the math. So let's do some math. <clears throat> I use this example from the Wikipedia just to show up exactly how this works and how the key is derived. So Alice and Bob agree to use modulus 23 and a base 5, which just happens to be the primitive root of 23. Alice chooses 6 as the secret integer. Alice computes by using 5 to the power of 6 modulus 23, which is the remainder, and equals 8. Alice sends 8 to Bob, so any intruder in the line will see 8 coming across the wire. Bob chooses 15 as the secret integer. He computes 5 to the 15th modulus 23, which equals 19. 19 is sent to Alice. Once again, the intruder will see 19. Alice computes 19 to the power of 6 modulus 23 to get 2 by using that same secret integer. Remember that exponents are computations are commutative they can be done in any order and arrive at the same result. Bob computes a to the 15th 
modulus 23, which also equals 2. The key is now 2. This is the key. Note, though, that these numbers must be larger, 600 digits or more. The secret number can be as small as 6 and 15. RSA works much the same way as Diffie-Hellman. They take two very big prime numbers and they multiply them together to make a number n. Now the rest of the math is very very complicated and you can look it up if you want using the RSE key description at the bottom at Stack Exchange. Uh, to simplify this process and not take up all 10 minutes just describing this mathematical process, in the end you have a public key and a private key, which are mathematical inverses of each other. Now, these two prime numbers have to be remain secret. Um, leaking of the key, or the two primes used to make the key, will allow for the key to be easily derived again. So how did these keys work? The public key encrypts the plain text into a cybertext the private key indicates to the holder of the key on how to undo the mathematical operations in order to translate ciphertext into plain text. Two people need to have a key pair in order to safely and securely exchange keys, which I will describe later on. Many services use these concepts for their implementation, such as SSH, certificates, PGP, email encryption, etc. If Alice wants Bob to be the only person to read a message, it wouldn't make sense for a public key to be the decryption method. So, first off, how do you exchange keys? Alice and Bob both make a key pair using the RSA method. Alice and Bob place their public keys in a public setting, a website, a key repository, etc. Now, <clears throat> in order for them to decrypt it, they're going to need the private key from each other. In order to do this, Alice encrypts with Bob's public key and sends it to Bob. Therefore, Bob can only decrypt that private key which is encrypted using his private key. Now, Bob has Alice's private key. Bob does the same process and Alice now has Bob's key. The keys are now exchanged. Therefore, if I was to send you a message, I would use your public key to encrypt it and then I would send it to you where you can use the private key to decrypt it. So here's how a key looks like. Um, I generated this key pair specifically for an example. It is not in production in any of my machines. However, the public key can be spread far and wide and notice the difficulty in making the public key turn into a private key. This highlighted portion shows that inside the private key file it also has the public key in there so it knows which algorithm to use in order to decrypt it. So what do you do with the keys? Use of the public and private keys for everything is not advisable. As I stated earlier, it takes 1024 bits to match the security of 512 bits. However, <clears throat> there is a simple solution to this that works for everybody. Using the public and private key pair, you can encrypt a message with a symmetric key that was just generated for this message. You can encrypt the key with the receiver's private key and then send the whole package to the receiver. Now this symmetric key is known as a session key just because it's only used for this message. It can be thrown away once, it's, once the session is over. Now they have to use the public key from the web in order to decrypt that package to get the symmetric key use the symmetric key to decrypt the message to receive the private key. The public-private key combo is only used to decrypt the key. It has nothing to do with the message. So I have some resources for this very dense topic. Um, if you go to that YouTube link, it does a much better job of explaining this process. And it, uh, it's around roughly a 20-minute video. You can look at the patent of the RSA encryption method. Or if you are an audio listener, like I am, if you listen to a Security Now episode 34 on public key cryptography, he explains this extremely well and extremely simply where anybody can understand it. This is going to be my second video. I appreciate all the work everyone's doing, and I hope you all have a great weekend and a great rest of the semester.